be here for Mother's Day. And I'm so pleased. Patricia mothered five children, and, uh, which I think was a miracle. She wanted 10, <laughs> and I won. And uh, now she mothers five children. It doesn't stop. I, I thought when they left home, it would stop, and we would be at home alone. It just, for those parents who think this can happen, it doesn't happen. <laughs> they want to live at home. They want to be with mum. And so she just keeps doing it. But it's now got another eight ch children called grandchildren added to it. And so the mothering thing just never seems to stop. The dad thing stops a little bit. <laughs> I go fishing to get away from it. But, um, no, no. but I think Patricia has been one of the great mothers. Why don't you give her a welcome? <laughs> Well, thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here on Mother's Day. I'll just show you the recent photo we had of our lot, just so you do believe what he said. Oh, no, wrong one, please. That, that's the one there. There we are. That's our full family there at Andre Mikhaila's wedding with our own children, Charmaine from Germany on the left there, Matthias, little German children speak both languages, Reuben, our son, Kylie, and the three grandchildren. And moving across from there is Bevan and Marissa, Ethan, Kelly. Oh, look, he keeps putting that up before. And our son, Berica, their little children in the front. So that is us. It's true what he says, but please put that other one up. I know you're dying to see what that's all about. But this is because I was hanging out with the youth down at the light show at the viaduct on Friday night. That's Andy Scar beside me, Jasmine um, Chamberlain, uh, Merciana and Miriam George and me right in the middle. I was cool, I was young, I was with the young ones. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Come on, give everyone. I had for that Friday night down there and they found me and they just wanted to hang out with me, you know, it was so cool. So let this be an ad for Breakthrough. If I'm young enough to hang out there down at the viaduct with the youth, then I'm young enough to be hanging out at Breakthrough as well. Is Miriam here this morning? Miriam Andy Scar, why don't you two stand up? You're leading that youth area of our church. Well done, both of you, well done. <clears throat> Let me tell you parents, your, your youth is safe with them. They got them home safely. They did get a little bit of money out of my purse, I'm just saying, but I hope you enjoyed it all. <laughs> it's what mothers do, isn't it? But um, there are some special mothers here today I'd like to mention. Um, Tracy, you've got your mum there. Why don't you stand up with your lovely mum? This is Tracy Kirkley's mum. Beresford's in the front here. There she is. Specially bought today. If you've specially bought a mother along, why don't you just indicate to me? Um, I Oh, yes, you're... Oh, very good. Could you stand up with your mum? Andrea, did you... And her mum. Andrea was on our stage last week. And she's got her mum here. Welcome. Anybody else this morning who's specially bought their mum? And of course, Emma's lovely, Master's lovely mum in the front. Why don't you stand up and we'll just welcome you. You've been before, but I love to see you here. Thank you. That's Emma's lovely mum in the orange dress. Well, today is Mother's Day. It's not something we highly celebrate in our family. I think because we've all been rushing off to church on Mother's Day. But I'd like to say that one out of my five has texted me to say Happy Mother's Day. Uh, that's something. Those of you who know my children can probably guess which one has been thoughtful enough to do that, but they still mean it, I know. But, um, <laughs> but the message that <clears throat> I have on my heart is primarily targeted at mums, but it is applicable to all. So dads, it's, it's for you as well. You'll glean things. The end part of the message is definitely for a universal um, message to everybody. And Brent is going to bring the service to close however he feels. Just like to say, mums, we have for you special treats this morning at two stations. One is in the foyer and one is 
by the events hall gates where you pick up your children. Special drinks with nice glasses and um, other things that have been organised. And tonight, when Bevan is here, we have chocolate log, ladies. So if you're here tonight, that'll be special as well. I'm super excited about Bevan being here. He comes like a burst of something, but um, he will also be doing Breakthrough here this year fronting some of our meetings along with Joel and Brenton, however that rolls, and, and with our guest speaker, Patty, who is a great woman. Anyway, so that's for you ladies. If Brent forgets to say at the end, find your special station, either in the foyer or at the events hall gates. Men, that's for the ladies and not the children either, so take guard. Right, my message this morning is whispered words. And... I think the most effective way at times to communicate with our children is not through shouting and yelling and threatening and carrying on, but through whispering, the silent little words that you whisper in their ears. I've been blessed to have not only a mother, but a father who spoke quietly to me, instilled some things in my life that I never forgot, and the moments that I needed things to come back to me, they came. And the woman in the Bible that I want to talk about right now has got the strangest of names. Her name is Josabed. She was married to a man called Amran, who was from the tribe of Levi. And they lived in Egypt under the tyranny and the rule of the Pharaoh at that time. She had already had two children called Miriam and Aaron, who would feature later on in the in the story, but she had this child, this boy, and the scriptures say that he was beautiful and unusual, and from the start she must have, have known that. But the times were terrible. The midwives had been told that if any woman gave birth to a boy, they were to be killed right there and then and thrown into the Nile. When the midwives, the um, Israelite Jewish midwives, refused to do that, Pharaoh upped his ante a little bit and said, never mind that then, just throw them in the aisle anyway. He was completely determined to reduce the population of the Israelites that were growing and multiplying in Egypt at that time. Whatever way he was going to do it, he was going to do it. He was afraid of the Israelites, that they would outnumber, outnumber them. And he was afraid that they would start like a civil war and rise up against his rule. And they did have God on their side, so he probably had good reason to be afraid. But it was in this climate that this mother gave birth to this beautiful child, unusually handsome little baby. And because she didn't want to be heard, she secretly hid him. And so began the whispered words. What as a mother do you say to that newborn baby that you're holding in your arms? They are the most tenderest words of love. This is your own flesh and blood. This is the thing that has come from you. The words of love, the words of protection, the words of just adoration to this little bundle in your arms. Those of you who have been mothers know what this is like. Holding them closely to you, letting them sleep in the bed with you. I know mothers it's been advised against, but let me just say with all my five children, the whole family had good sleep nights because the baby was always in the bed with me. No screaming babies in my house. Just not saying that's the way you should do it, but that's probably the way she did it in those times to keep this little baby crying. Because if the baby had been heard, it would have definitely been thrown into the Nile, there and then. Whispered words, quiet whispered words going into the spirit of this newborn baby day after day after day. Quiet little songs whispering, God is with you. God loves you. I love you. You're a child of God's. You're a child of mine. And so this went on. But we read something incredibly poignant about these parents. It tells us 
In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So right from the start, just a moment, right from the start, the whispered words that would have come into Moses' ears were words of faith. Why? Because these parents had faith. By faith, Moses' parents had the faith in God to hide him for three months, and they were not afraid of the circumstances going on around them. They were not afraid of what the Pharaoh was saying. Three months this happened, and at three months, we know the story so clearly. We've seen the movie, and I don't think it exaggerates anything. She could not keep this little baby quiet any longer. He was becoming demanding. He was becoming noisy. He was becoming to the age of three months where they start moving around a little bit. And this mother is, is in the face of real fear. Real fear. In the face of real fear, that is replaced by real faith. Faith in God. That no matter what was going to happen, there was one bigger than the circumstances around her. Come on, ladies. Some of you mothers are already... Oh, yes, come on. Come on. Real faith in the face of real fear for her baby. And she took him, a little basket. She lined the basket with something like tar, which was probably similar to what goes on the roads. And her last whispered words all the way, she's pushing that little thing into the water, hoping, believing her last whispered words would not only have been to that little baby there in this river Nile, but also to God. God, my Father, take care of this little one. Preserve his life. Have your purposes. Whispered words, not too loud, in case any of those guards heard who were marching up and down the Nile looking for anything that was a male. My goodness, whispered words. And as she let that little babe go, we know the story. She said to her daughter, Miriam, who may have been around about the <coughs> 10, 11 year old Mark, watch, just watch him, watch him. I don't know if she'd ever instructed that girl to know what to do. Just watch, I can't do any more. I must let him go now. You watch, whispering in the reeds of the Nile, you watch. And as she watched, Away she went. Pharaoh's daughter came down, saw this little basket, took the lid off, and the baby was crying, it says. And Pharaoh's daughter did not have children. Her husband had died. And that maternal thing within her thought, oh my gosh, what a beautiful baby. What an unusual looking beautiful boy here. And she picked him up held him, held him to herself, and the daughter came up, Moses' sister, and said, shall I get some wet nurse to feed this baby, keep him alive for you, Pharaoh's daughter? Yes, she said, went and got her mother, paid her mother, said the mother would be paid for this job. My goodness, isn't that just the grace of God? Isn't that just the grace of God? In the face of fear, there is great faith. By faith, it said, these parents, when Moses was born, by faith, his parents had to not only hide him, but then also to release him and know that God would take care of him. I don't know, commentaries vary on this, I don't know how long it was, or necessarily the access to Pharaoh's palace that the mother had with her son Moses. Commentaries vary, or how long she had him for. It could have been five years, could have been three years, some say it could have been, he could have been much older that she cared for him. But this one thing I do know, that there was no way that Moses would learn either about his God who he was or his destiny 
unless it had been through the whispered words of his mother. No one else had that access to him but his mother. And I imagine it like this. I imagine she was in some part of Pharaoh's court, access to Pharaoh's daughter coming and going, because this was her son. She'd rescued him out of the Nile. She would not have le left him until he was five or 12 years before having him come into the palace, either visiting or living there in her quarters with his mother. And this is what I imagine, Moses, Moses, Moses. Look, look out the window there. Look out that window. Look at what's happening to your people out there. Look at how they're being treated. Look at how they're forced to do things. Look at how the Egyptians are treating them. Moses, you are called by God to bring freedom to your people. Moses, you are not called to be one of them, even though you're living here in this palace with all this luxury and refinery and privilege. These are whispered words that this mother would have said to him over and over again. Moses, God is your father. You are a miracle. God saved your life when you were in the basket on the Nile there. He did not save your life for nothing. He saved it so that you could do something about the injustice you see out that window every day. You can do something about how the people of God are being treated by their slave drivers. Moses, Moses, your name is Moses. Because you were a miracle, you were got from the water. Pharaoh's daughter called you that. But you are called a child of the living God. You are a child of the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And she would have listed the whole lot off. Moses, you have a destiny. Moses, you have a calling. Moses, I'm with you, but you are going to one day do something great for God. And she would have taught him about God. She would have taught him about who God was. All about the things from right from the, the creation, right through the books of the Bible as coming up to that point. She would have taught him about his purpose. Faith from a mother like that is imparted to a child, no matter how young they are. And dare I say, no matter how old they are. Faith from a mother was imparted to Moses. He would have believed something that other children his own age could never have believed. He would have believed something that the other children in Pharaoh's palace had no conception of because they had another voice in their ears. He would have believed that he could make a difference in a world that was wrong. They only believed that they would be part of it and carry on the oppression and the slavery of God's people. Whispered words. Whispered words in the face of danger. Whispered into this little boy's ear. And I just want to say, just I didn't mean to make this point again, but I just feel it's not just your baby. It's not just your child. It is as long as you are a mother, as long as you are a mother, regardless of how old your children are. I can only ever speak words over Skype to my daughter in, in Germany, but my goodness, I do. When she talks about mum, I don't know what it's gonna be like when we come back to New Zealand here, the housing prizes, the warmer tears get work. I remind her, darling, God's been with you every step of the way. Yes, every step of the way. Ten years ago when you went to Germany, you didn't know what you do, would do. There was a job and there was a handsome German man there wanting to marry you. And yes, you're back there and you're doing fine. Every step of the way, God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Come on. No matter how old they are, just wanted to make that point again. Hebrews 11 and verse 24. By faith, Moses, <clears throat> when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Yes, wasn't going to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 
That's brave. All of its own, that's brave. My goodness. Why did he ever refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? All this privilege. He probably had his own little throne right there. Everything he wanted. Because he had had whispered words from his mother. Mother's happy Mother's Day. My goodness. Right there. Would your child like those whispered words from you? If you feel today, and I know some of you do, it's okay, that you've stuffed it up a bit <laughs> and said some words to your kids that maybe right now you're just regretting, thinking, oh my gosh, I don't think that really helped them a lot. <laughs> maybe I'd gone a bit over the top. Let me tell you, it's never too late. It's never too late to start again. It's never too late to whisper some words to your child that is going to bring about their destiny, what God has for them. Teach them about God. Whisper words of faith from your heart. It's never too late. Kids are so resilient. They'll forgive you in an instant. I'm, I, I know that. Not perfect myself. There's been a few rounds of the garage in that, my day that I might regret, not that I'd tell them, but, you know, when they were growing up. Now, come on. Whispered words. Your children, do they refuse to be named after the things of this world? Or do they enter into it? Do they refuse to, to move away from those whispered words that you have told them? You can never overdo this. The God that loves them, whisper it to them all the time. Child of God. And Moses, he refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. He refused to be part of that situation. He refused to be part of the problem there. He refused to condone this injustice and cruelty and slavery because somebody had whispered different words into his ear from the very moment he was born. And who was it, mothers, on this Mother's Day? It was his mother. And through that, faith was imparted. And we see here that Moses decided to make a bold move. I think it was a bolder move than getting the Red Sea parted myself because by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen, which is God. Let me tell you, when he left Egypt, he wasn't just going for a walk out into the desert. He was fleeing for his life because he had actually killed someone who was hurting one of his people. And he had been found out, and Pharaoh had found out and went to try to kill him. He fleed for his life. He fleed out into that desert, yet by faith he was going. By faith he left Egypt. He did not fear the wrath of a man. He did not fear what could happen to him because he knew, he knew this unseen thing was his God. He knew that this unseen thing would protect him. He knew that the unseen, looking as seeing him who is unseen, his God, he knew that regardless of what faced him out in that desert, God would protect him. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Come on. And for some of you here, I just know that leaving the Egypt is important. Leaving is important, not fearing anything, but knowing that God is going to be the one to bring about the miracle, which is definitely what happened in the story. And so it was that he went to the desert. He didn't just go out there strolling or on a donkey. He would have got the fastest chariot and the fastest horses he could have found. He would have known what Pharaoh and all his lot were capable of doing if they decided to kill him. He was dressed as an Egyptian. He was riding on transport that was Egyptian. And he went into the desert at a pace for a long, long time. It says there, into the Sinai Desert there. And as he got there, he came to a well. 
And something else was going to come back to him of the whispered words from his mother. Because he'd learned from his mother something about how to behave kindly to people. And he sees these girls there sitting, trying to get water at the well. And these others come up, shepherds come up, and they're bullying and knocking them around. This isn't right. This is a repeat of Egypt. Women shouldn't be pushed about like this and out of the way, we're here, girls, kind of stuff. The whispered words would have come back from his mother. Be kind to these girls. Be respectful. Don't be like these Egyptians. Moses, remember when we looked out the window and you saw how badly they were treating people, old people, women, anybody who were the children. Don't be like that. Moses, you're beyond that. You're different to that. You're a good boy. You've got a good heart. You've got God with you. It's all coming back to him now as he's sitting there at this well and this commotion is going on. And so he, he got rid of the bullies and the girls quickly and drew their water for the girls. He's a gentleman. How did Egypt ever produce a gentleman of this magnitude? Whispered words from his mother. It's probably the first time he'd ever had to put it into practice. Girls went rushing back, said, Dad, Dad, there's a man and he's drawn our water for him, us, and he's an Egyptian. An Egyptian. I mean, did the father have no caution that if he invited him in for dinner, he could kill a lot of them? This is an Egyptian on a chariot dressed like they dress and that gold stuff and the things on their head and everything. This is an Egyptian has come to our little well and our little village. But we find that the father knew something. There was a connection there. There was a connection, a God connection. And this unseen God that had led Moses as he fled out of Egypt, he only saw God, he only believed in God, had led him to the right place at the right time and to the right home to be able to marry one of these daughters in good time. Where did he ever know how to find God's people like that? This man was a priest. These were his daughters. Where did he ever know the whispered words of his mother? The whispered words to your children will help them find the people of God wherever they are. Three of my children live overseas. They have found Christian churches Christian communities. Brent and I often get to preach in the churches where our children are in Germany and Australia. Whispered words. Always look for the people of God. Always look for a church where you can serve and give into. And they have whispered words. Only way Moses could have found his old people, his own people. And as we find... Moses also had, would have remembered in the very back of his mind some things. And for 40 years he was allowed to dwell in there on the things that he had witnessed in Egypt and the things that he was now going to face. The whispered words of his mother would have been very, very familiar in the back of his mind. They were to be brought into startling focus. The minute he went to the Sinai where the mountain they worshipped at with his little flock of sheep and the bush burned and burst into flames, would not stop burning and from there the voice of God spoke. Some of the things God spoke would have been familiar to him because it would have been the things his mother had spoken when she had showed him the injustice that was going on around them there. And God said to Moses, I have seen the oppression of my people. I have heard their cries of distress. This is familiar to him. His mother had explained all this to him since he was a babe. 
till goodness knows how old, maybe 12. I've heard the cries of their distress. I've seen the treatment of the slave drivers and I'm aware of their suffering. So God's now telling him things that he's heard from his mother. They will come back into sharp focus. Why would you not when the bush is burning in front of you? You have to hide your face away, take your shoes off because God is speaking directly to Moses now. <clears throat> Everything about what his mother said would have come into sharp focus. My goodness, my mother told me this too. My goodness, and so he was kind of okay, God. I'm okay with that. But what was not familiar was what happened next. Because God became adamant with Moses there. God said, look, the cry of my people of Israel has reached me. And verse 10 there, now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. Exodus 3 verse 10, now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. My goodness, my goodness, look at that. You must lead my people out of Egypt. Would Moses ever have known anything about this without those whispered words from his mother? And so it was he did. He listened to God and he left that burning bush with the whispered words of his mother brought to focus. Moses, you're God's child. Moses, you have a destiny. Moses, you are gonna do something great for me. Moses, you are going to bring those, change that circumstance that you're seeing there. Moses, you are gonna bring freedom to my people. He'd heard all this. And now, mixed with that is the voice of God that says, you must lead my people out of Israel, out of Egypt, sorry. I want to bring this home on my final point here and say, I believe God whispers to us too. And he wants to whisper to us. I have heard the audible voice of God only once which clarified and defined a lot of what I do in this church and will continue to do. And we'll go into the next generation here, I believe. It's around the music and the worship and the writing of new material, new songs. It was an audible voice. That's the only time I've ever heard that. The only other times I ever hear God speak is in a whisper, a small voice. And Elijah understood this when he was trying to hear the voice of God and stood up on the high mountain. First there was wind, then there was an earthquake. God's voice was not in any of that, but in that still, small voice. You know, we cannot hear a whisper if there's a commotion around us. Certainly not easily. How often have you as a mother had a little child trying to tell you something in a busy supermarket? You know, or somewhere where there's a commotion, or even outside there this morning, the little voices are whispering away, Mummy, Mummy, I need to go to the bathroom, or something like that. And there's a commotion going, You can't hear the little whispers. Well, it's like that sometimes when God wants to tell us something that will change and lead us and guide us and strengthen us. And there's a commotion going on, there's too much busyness. There's too much activity and there are too many competing voices, my goodness, at the moment. A whisper is up close, as almost missed at times. It's that thing that you just think, oh my gosh, that absolutely is God. And how did I nearly miss that? Want more of that? I want to know that. And in bringing this to a close, before my husband gets up, I have been led just to read from one passage and I want to leave you today as mothers and as all of us with the visual picture that God wants to speak to us 
in that still small voice. He wants to speak to us like a whisper, just there, just right in our very close. And as I'm just going to read and explain the final scripture here, I'm just going to ask you just to close your eyes and just be in the space where you think, my goodness, is this what she's talking about today? Is this what she means, that the Holy Spirit wants to whisper in my ear and in my spirit, that God wants to speak through his Holy Spirit, which is all around us and within us, just small and little, like a whisper. And the scripture I'm going to explain it from is in the Song of Solomon. It's beautiful. Jesus, who's my beloved, said to me, Rise up, my darling. Let me say to you here this morning, don't stay where you are. Rise up. Come away with me, Jesus says. Come away with me. To come away into a place with God and his Holy Spirit means we have to rise up. We have to make a movement. But my picture is, with that whispered voice, is there are things to be seen. There are things to be experienced with God. There are things to be learnt and smelled and enjoyed. Look, he says, the winter is past. I like this to be daily. I like to feel that the stresses of, of whatever everyday life is can be changed and taken away. Come with me, says the Holy Spirit. Come with me, whispers the Holy Spirit. Come, come away with me. The winter is past. Those rains are gone in your life. The flowers are springing up again. Did you know that with the Holy Spirit you can see new growth all around you? In your family, in your children, in your home, new growth. And he says, whispers, come away with me. See what I see around your life. See that new growth. The season of singing birds has come. Can you hear that sound from heaven? Can you hear that? Can you hear a beautiful sound? Not the commotions that go on. And listen for the sounds of singing. The cooing doves have filled the air. Oh, how nice. The fig trees are forming fruit. Come with me and see the fruitfulness that is forming in your life. The fruits of the Spirit are forming all around you, whispers the Holy Spirit in many of your ears in this moment. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, self-control. These things are forming. They're all around you. And the fragrant grapevines are, are blossoming. There is new wine all around you. New wine is on the way. Come, whispers the Holy Spirit. Come, come away with me. Come and see and taste and experience the things. Whispered words into your ears. Father God, across this place today, Lord, I would just ask that every ear would be open to hear the whisper of your Holy Spirit. Come to them this day. Each mother, each father, each teenager, in Jesus' name, amen. Brent, if you would like to come. I think that the profound nature of this is this fact, that the words create identity. And one of the things that is so I think poignant in what Patricia shared this morning is when Moses' mother shared and spoke to Moses in a very difficult circumstance. She actually created identity that created a deliverer. In the same way then when Jesus whispers to us, actually he creates in us identity and causes us to be deliverers in whatever way that we are meant to express that. And it's one of the most profound understandings of what spirituality is, what hearing God's voice is, is actually he's trying to get us to understand that we, we are not how society tries to make us. 
but we are, the, the, we are meant to be the result of what God seeks to speak and create identity. And mothers in particular, and fathers also, but mothers have a huge task. What are you speaking into your children's lives? Even if they're like my kids, growing up and already married, one of the most amazing things that has happened often is my children have come to me even in their adulthood and they've said, Dad, I need to talk to you about something and end up asking me to pray for them. But it all comes because Patricia poured into our children positive words of affirmation, which she now does to the grandchildren. And I believe that's what generation to generation, when you've got a concept of generational blessing, you seek to do that right through your family line. I often think this, that uh, when the day that you became a Christian was the day that everything changed for your family. Whatever preceded you, whatever abuse or negativity or broken families or whatever occurred when you became a Christian, what I operated at that moment was an opportunity to forever change the heritage, the identity, the future dynamics of your family, your children and your grandchildren. And uh, I thought that was just an outstanding message, Patricia. Um, I think just it was just such a heartfelt message. Whispered words, Jesus changing your identity, you changing the identity of others. Father, I thank you right now. Let's all stand, actually. Come on, let's all stand. I want to pray for the mothers right now. And I know that some of you are discouraged by what's happened with your children. And, uh, and, I, and I think sometimes there are things that God can give to you to actually bring reconciliation back with your kids, whether it's writing them a letter, whether it's asking the kids to forgive you for stuff maybe you've said or done or whatever. But in a moment like this is an opportunity to just open up your heart and just say, Lord... What can I do to bring reconciliation and healing to my family? Or what do I need to do to help build the identity of my children and my grandchildren? Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just speak into the heart of every person here, and especially into the mums, who have got such a profound job of bringing and building identity into their children and children's children and even beyond. Father, I pray that you'd bless every mother here today, that this would be, have been a word that has just incredibly encouraged, inspired, directed their lives. Father, just bless mums today. Let them have a great rest of the day tonight when Bevan comes. Just also let him just bring a great word to mothers that will just inspire further a shift in our hearts. Father, we are called to stand in that position of faith for our generation and future generations, like Moses' mother did. And so, Father, we pray, let that grace be around us. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Amen. And we got some great food for mothers. Men, keep your hands off.